Another broad aspect of information processing is our memory. Memory is the retention of information over time. Memory allows humans to span time in reflection over life's activities. Imagine how difficult, if not impossible, it would be to learn and adapt if you couldn't form any memories of any kind. Researchers study how information is placed in memory, or encoded, how it is retained or stored after being encoded, and how it is found or retrieved for a certain purpose later. Encoding, storage, and retrieval are the basic processes required for memory, and failures can occur in any of these processes. One of the reasons memory can be inaccurate is that our memories aren't like photos stored on a flash drive. People construct memories. People mold memories to fit information that already exists in their mind. Our schemas, those mental frameworks we have of the world, influence and affect what information we pay attention to, the inferences we make about, what in, you know, about that information, and how we retrieve information. Once we do manage to retrieve a memory, it's just bits and pieces. We fill in the gaps based on our own preconceived ideas and assumptions. Even as babies, we already show a limited type of memory. There was an experiment where a baby is placed in a crib under a mobile, and they tie one end of a ribbon to the mobile and the other end of the ribbon to the baby's ankle. When the baby kicks, the mobile moves, and the baby notices this. Weeks later, if you put the baby in the crib under the same mobile, but without a ribbon, the baby will start kicking, apparently trying to make it move. So they seem to have memory of perceptual motor information like that. Most of their memory, however, is implicit memory. They retain skills, but they don't have a conscious recollection of it. The prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus, the part of the brain that forms new memories, aren't mature enough yet for long-lasting explicit memories. In fact, most people can't remember much of anything from before when they were three years old. We call the phenomena infantile amnesia. As individuals move through childhood, we start to see improvements in memory. One type of memory, short-term memory, involves holding on to information consciously for up to 30 seconds without rehearsing it. For example, if I said, repeat the following string of numbers, 867423, you could probably repeat it back to me. Two- and three-year-old children can only repeat, repeat back two or three digits before losing their train of thought. This slowly increases as we mature, and eventually settles in at around seven digits in adulthood. But of course, there are individual differences. Some people can remember more, some people can remember less. In contrast with short-term memory, long-term memory is relatively unlimited and permanent. As children get older, they move beyond infantile amnesia and start to develop more permanent autobiographical memories. Those are just memories about themselves. There has been some discussion, though, about whether young children should be allowed to provide eyewitness testimony at trials. Although their memory is improving, preschoolers are very susceptible to suggestion. It's easy to get a manipulated or distorted testi testimony out of a very young child. Memory can be improved with the use of strategies. Strategies for memory include the use of mental activities to improve how you process information. Rehearsing and organizing information are typical strategies used by both children and adults. Rehearsing is just repeating something multiple times, like repeating a name so that you don't forget it. Creating mental images is another strategy for improving memory. It works better for older kids and adults than for younger children. But the more you can visualize something in your mind, the easier it is to remember it, because we have better memory for images than for words or sounds. An extremely effective memory strategy is elaboration. Elaboration involves engaging in a more extensive processing of information. You dig deeper into the information and make connections and associations. 
For example, if the word when is on a list of words to remember, a person could think to themselves, when is the last time I won something? Then those mental connections make it easier to recall the word later on. In adulthood, working memory and processing speed peak at around 45 and gradually start to decline around 57, but more so for some types of memory than others. Episodic memory is more affected. Episodic memory is memory of the where and how of life's happenings, such as what did you eat for breakfast or where were you on Tuesday morning. Now think of an episode of something on TV. What happened in that episode? Semantic memory is a bit more stable. Semantic memory is a person's general knowledge of the world. So that's things like remembering the rules of a game that you like to play, or remembering the names of famous people. What happens with semantic memory is that we start to have more tip-of-the-tongue experiences, where you know the word that you're trying to say, but you can't quite remember it. You might think, oh, I know their name, it starts with an M and ends with an A or something, something like Melissa or Matilda, oh golly, what was it? You know, That's a tip-of-the-tongue experience, and we get more of those as we age. The last two types of memory I'll throw at you are source memory and perspective memory. Source memory is the ability to remember where one learned something. I find it amusing when my mother tells me an interesting story or fact, and I'm the one that she got the story from. <laughs> She'll forget that she heard it from me. So that happens more often. And then there's prospective memory. Uh, this is remembering to do something in the future, such as remembering to take your medication or remembering to mail a bill. These types of memory decline in older adulthood too, but fortunately there are things that you can do to help mitigate it. For example, I often forget to take my medication, so I set an alarm on my phone to remind me, and I write all of my appointments and commitments on my calendar. My mother likes to say, keys fire phone on her way out the door to remind her to check and make sure that she has her keys, her phone, and that the stove is turned off. <laughs>